Hey guys, welcome back. Today it is my turn on the Scrappy YouTubers Liftathon. Now, if you haven't heard about this Liftathon yet, it is the most amazing, huge group of Scrappy YouTubers, and we are scrap lifting each other. So, all of those details of all of those channels that are participating is down in the description box. Make sure you subscribe to those channels that you aren't subscribed to already. And let's get started with my scrap lift. So I am scrap lifting Monia from Digi Design Resort, and this is the layout of hers that I have chosen to scrap lift. I am going to work in my traveler's notebook and taking inspiration from her page I have made myself this little photo strip uh, with these photos of Lil to work with. Now I really loved the pops of kind of orangey red in Monia's page and I kind of decided to replicate that but I'm going to swap out all of the blue tones for some yellows. So I went through my stash of 6x6 paper pads. I figured this is going to be the perfect layout to use one of those pads and grabbed this very old My Mind's Eye pad but you can see it's got the perfect colours. Um, and I've got quite a lot of it left, so I want to try and use up as many of these patterns as I can. Also out of my stash, I have pulled out this shipping tag. Luckily, it's kind of that sort of manila -y color, um, which goes quite nicely with this color scheme. And that's what I'm going to base my layout off. I'm kind of flipping her page upside down and I'm going to add um, a lot less mixed media. <laughs> I'm going to make my page a lot cleaner, I think a lot simpler. But what I'm doing is obviously with a 6x6 pad, I'm never going to be able to cover fully a traveler's notebook page. So instead, I'm just going to add these kind of diagonals, these triangles of pattern. I'm using two different patterns, but both in those kind of yellow tones, one on each side of the spread. What I'm going to create at the top of the left hand page is kind of a little cluster with this tag and my photo and so I want a whole bunch of patterns in behind there. Now the first pattern is going to be that background uh, triangle which is going to end up adhered onto my page uh, but the rest of these patterns here I'm going to turn into tags so I'm going to just trim this one down uh, just with my paper trimmer and then I'm kind of using the original manila tag as a template to trim off the edges, the corners, sorry, uh, in a little punched hole there. You can see it's just slightly longer than the original. My photo was going to end up adhered onto that manila tag, and so I wanted that red and white stripe um, to end up being underneath, sort of hanging out the bottom of that photo. Now I decided to grab this little this little uh, glassine bag with some packaging from um, some Citrus Twist wood veneer. Um, I love it and it's got that little heartbeats tag on it, I guess label, um, which I really loved as well. So what I did was use the thread, I just undid the knot and tied all three of these things together. So it's going to be a little bit loose probably a little bit different to normal. This is a brand new notebook that I made myself um, and so I fought with myself about whether I was going to have string hanging out the top of there uh, on the very first page and I decided eh, why not uh, that's what I'm going to do. I've tied all of those things together and then only adhered the bottom tag onto the page after first adhering that pattern paper down, which I realized I had forgotten to do. So I'm doing that on both of those pieces now. And you can see, I love the movement, the kind of tag and the little label, they just kind of flick around the page. Um, but it also gives me the perfect kind of hiding spot for some journaling. So I'm gonna be able to create this really clean looking page, but still have some journaling in there. I'm gonna pop that onto the red and white tag um, after I finish filming that is. Uh, and you will never even know it's there. Now I kind of want to create my visual triangle and I want to do that with a couple more tags and I started out by just hand trimming that and then I remembered that I have these very tiny tag dies. I think they're super old ones from Studio Calico uh, nesting tag dies. My main thing is that I love that teeny tiny little tag over there. I haven't picked that up yet but I will um, because when I was hand trimming that tag it just started looking 
a little bit too big. You can see here, I've already changed my mind um, about which dies I'm going to use to trim these pattern papers. And I am going to go for the very small one. Like I said at the beginning, I really wanted a clean, really clean, simple look. And for me, that means I want a lot of white space. I still want to stamp a title in here. Uh, and I don't want this side of the spread to start looking all too cluttered. I want the main sort of elements of the page to be on the left hand side. So I've trimmed out two very tiny little tags um, and I'm going to change my mind about the patterns that I use for those anyway. I flip this over to um, adhere down the red tag and I realize I actually quite like the yellow floral that's on the other side. I feel like it ties those two sides of the page together having the uh, coordinating pattern paper on the right hand side as well so I end up skipping the red and I'm just adhering down that little yellow tag instead and it gives me that visual triangle with the larger tag on the left and the two smaller tags on the right. Uh, I do decide to add a little bit more to this kind of tag cluster on the left there though. I'm going to add another tag in there, just another layer. Um, Monia's tags had quite a few layers in them and I just wanted to add just one more. I've really only got the two in there and so I'm going to tuck this little tag in underneath the uh, manila one but on top of the other pattern paper um, and this one I am going to adhere down onto the page as well and so again I changed my mind after I've trimmed out the tag I was going to use the little glasses um, pattern paper but in the end I went with that same kind of I don't know what you call it it's not quite a chevron went with that sort of yellow and cream pattern again to tie those two pages in together and as I was adhering that down I thought no I'm going to add a little bit more movement to this page and so I didn't keep it um, like vertical all lined up I added just a tiny angle to it and then I peeled back up those other two tags um, and just gave them a slight angle as well so um, because my photo is on that little bit of a lean and because that main tag is going to move around a bit it's never going to stay perfectly square I think the other ones need to kind of replicate that look as well and I've got that Tim Holtz tiny sticker book, uh, tiny word stickers. I uh, trimmed out a couple of those and then one of the pattern papers from that uh, paper pad also had these very, very tiny words in them. So I'm going to trim out some of those and kind of make them into my own tiny word stickers. Um, it kind of, the, the tone of them is a little bit more sympathetic to the colors in the page. The white ones from the sticker book are um, very white in comparison. So I've added a couple of them, but I'm going to use, going to use mostly these other tiny little words to kind of fill out those other tag clusters. So I'm trimming those down with my scissors, just kind of picking out the words that I want to use. They're, they're mostly words rather than phrases, but I can kind of put them together to make my own little phrases. And then I'm going to adhere those down with some uh, smart glue from scrapbook.com. One thing I do need to do is just powder the back of that Tim Holtz sticker on my tag. The, the little piece of sticker is sticking out. I need to remove the stick from there. So I'm just going to use my powder tool, uh, which in all honesty, I lost my original powder tool. So I've made my own little powder bag just with some baby powder. It works a treat and it smells great. Now, like I said, I am going to stamp my little title in here and I'm going to use the Chloe regular alphabet from Citrus Twist. I am going to stamp that in black. There's a few little touches of black on this page, so a black title makes sense. It's going to help give it a little bit more visual weight. Uh, what I am doing, though, is using my ruler guide here just to give me a vaguely straight line. And then I am very purposefully giving this title a little bit of non-straightness, just a little bit of movement in the... Um, in the stamping of it up and down and kind of a little bit awkward. I just liked the movement of it, especially with those tags um, sort of off to the side and all of those little words. Nothing's really straight and aligned and I think it makes much more sense that the title is not straight and aligned either. Now the last little bit of embellishment that I'm going to do on this page is to add a few sequins. These are these super old sequin kind of stickers from We Are Memory Keepers. They most definitely are um, on their last legs. They're losing their stick 
quite a lot. I'm using some gold, white and black ones and just sprinkling those around the page, just around those same clusters. Again, like I said, it's a brand new notebook. I don't generally put dimensional things in a brand new notebook like this, but you know me in sequins, I just can't help myself. And that is my layout pretty much all done. Like I said, I'm going to add some journaling under here off camera. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. And like I said, I will leave all of the links to all of the other scrappy YouTubers down below in the description box. Do head over and subscribe to any channels that you haven't subscribed to yet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to keep watching, there are a couple more videos on screen. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.